guys, welcome to my channel. This is Legally Engineer. Don't ever forget, 1157 is a very important provision under the obligations. Now, 1158, um, what, the, what does it provide? Uh, yes. So, 1158, Article 1158 obligations derived from law are not presumed. Mm -hmm. Only those expressly determined in this code or in special laws are demandable and shall be regulated by the precepts of the law which establishes them. And as to what has not been foreseen by the provisions of this book. Mm -hmm. So, Article 1158 of the Civil Code talks about obligations imposed by law or yung legal obligations. Mm -hmm. And sinasabi dyan na yung mga obligations derived daw from law, they are not presumed. Yes, no? they are not presumed. Kasi expressly presumed. provided dyan sa yes. batas. So, kagaya ng sabi natin kanina, example ng obligation to impose tax, to uh, impose by law, ay mm -hmm. yung obligation to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So, kailangan, according to Article 1158, yung obligations imposed by law, like obligation to pay taxes, they must be expressly provided by law. Otherwise, we cannot presume that there is an obligation to pay taxes. Yes, because this is actually a burden upon the obliger. Yes. And therefore, it cannot be presumed. They are the exception and not the rule. Yes. And in order for it to be demandable, they must be clearly set forth in the law. For example, in the case of the law in, in obligations and contracts, it's expressly provided under the civil code or in, in special laws, kailangan expressly provided doon. Again, in the absence of a clear uh, provisions ng batas, uh -oh. as there, is that, no mm -hmm. there is no obligation if the law does not provide for that obligation. Uh, so, yun yung tatandaan ninyo pagdating yes. sa law as a source of obligation. obligation. Okay? So now, Article 1159, obligations arising from contracts have the force of law between the contracting parties and should be complied with in good faith. So ito yung tinatawag natin na contractual obligations. Yes. And uh, it speaks of, uh, yun na, contractual obligations. The meaning obligations. of contract yes. first, the contract mm -hmm. uh, according to Article 11, uh, Article 1305, the civil code, code, it is the meeting of mind between two persons whereby one binds himself with respect to the other to give something or to render some service. Yes, and we'll be discussing that sa second part pa naman yes, sa contracts. Sa contracts. But it's important here because we need to define what a contract is. is. And as a, nga, source of as a source of an obligation. Sure. Kasi it has its binding force, no? Yes. Because obligations arising from contracts have, again, the force of law. Ulitin ko ha, it has the force of law. It's not promulgated by the state. It's between the parties. And yet, its binding force is that of a law yes. between the parties. Pero attorney, mm. does it necessarily mean na yung contract ay mas superior mm -hmm. sa... Uh, is it more su is it superior doon sa law? Um, well, ang rule natin dyan is that um, the contracts that we have should not run contrary to what the law provides. Yes. Ibig sabihin, we have freedom to contract, yes, which uh, we will discuss later on, but that freedom has limitations, yes. constitutional and statutory limitations. In the event na yung kontrata na meron kayo ay um, running afoul or yes. contrary to the law, then it must be uh, stricken out for being uh, illegal or uh, unconstitutional. Diba? Yes. So, tatandaan natin yun. Okay? Although, yung contract nga, ulitin natin, they are the law. Between, yung contracts have the force of and effect of law. law between the parties. So, kung ano yung napag-usapan, yun ang susundin. True. Unless, yung napag-usapan na yun is contrary to law, morals, with customs, public order, and public policy. Kasi guys, if it's against the law, then the contract is not valid. Yes, and correct. it cannot be a source of an um, obligation. Yun. Yeah. Just like how a, mm -hmm. a law that is unconstitutional cannot be a source of an obligation. Ganun din naman sa contract. Yes. A contract that, that is, is against illegal. the law, that yes. is illegal, cannot be a source. Yes. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, validity of contracts. Ano ba yung, paano ba natin masasabi na valid? Valid ang contracts. Mm -hmm. So, masasabi natin na valid ang contracts kapag nandun or if there, uh, uh, if there exists the three essential requisites of a contract. Ano yung three essential mm -hmm. requisites? Yun yung consent, object, and cause or consideration. COC. Yes, COC. Mm -hmm. We will tackle that on the latter part of mm -hmm. the mode, uh, of the f module 5. Mm -hmm. after five after midterms mm -hmm. all right 
So, um, sabi nga natin, dito, uh, dapat mag-exist yung tatlong essential requisites, consent, object, and cause or consideration. And provided, again, that it should not be contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, and, and public, public policy. policy. Otherwise, pag contrary, ano mangyayari? Pag contrary, sabi nga natin kanina, it will be, uh, it will be held as void. void. Alright, so attorney Uy, under Article 1159, dun sa last uh, portion, portion uh -huh. ng article, may sinabi dun na it has to be complied with in good faith. Yes. So ano bang ibig sabihin ng compliance in good faith? Yeah. Compliance in good faith means compliance or performance in accordance with the stipulations or terms of the contract or agreement. So ibig sabihin nun, that which is agreed upon in the contract is the law between the parties and must be complied with in good faith provided that the agreement shall not be contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, and public policy. Kailangan ng sincerity and honesty. So, dapat i-observe yung sincerity and honesty to prevent one party from taking undue advantage over the other. Yan yung tinatawag na good faith. Kasi nga, non-compliance by a party with his legitimate obligations after receiving the benefits of a contract would constitute unjust, unjust enrichment, enrichment on his part. part. So, so sinasabi ng sa compliance in good faith, kailangan kung ano yung nakasaad dun sa contract mm -hmm. or kung ano yung stipulations nyo dun kung ano napagkasundan, yun ang susundin yes. with sincerity and honesty to prevent undue advantage on the part of the other. Mm, okay. So, um, there are instances kasi na pwedeng magkaroon din ng breach of contract. Yes. No? So, narinig natin yung madalas breach. yung breach of contract. Uh -huh. Ano ba tong breach of contract na ito? It takes place mm -hmm. when a party fails or refuses to comply without legal reason or justification with his obligation under the contract that has been agreed upon. And in most cases, it will render the guilty party liable for so damages. So, breach or in mm -hmm. other words, violation of the contract, of the terms of the contract. If a party would fail to perform what is incumbent upon, upon him, him to yes. perform or to deliver, then that would be a breach of contract, contract. in the absence nga ng any legal well, reason or justification. Kasi later on, we'll uh, find out na pwede naman may yes. mga justifiable reasons na Kung bakit hindi makakakomply. And so, excited tayo dyan, mga 42s, 42s, ganyan. Yes. So, pag-usapan natin yan. But for now, um, we'll proceed with Article 1160. So and what does Article 1167? Uh, obligations derived from quasi-contracts shall be subject to the provisions of Chapter 1, Title 17 of this book. Yes. So Article 1160 talks about quasi-contractual obligations. Mm. So, kanina, dinefine na natin ang quasi-contract under Article 2142. Ulitin-ulit mm. natin, is that juridical relation resulting from lawful, voluntary, and unilateral acts which are enforceable to the end that no one shall be unjustly enriched or benefited at the expense of another. Um, paano yun, uh, attorney? Well, kasi di ba nabanggit natin, there must be an existence of the essential requisite, which is consent. Yes. And consent. seemingly, pagdating kasi sa quasi-contract, hindi naman, wala namang consent eh, di ba? Yes, I mean, wala namang unknown consent. naman, dun sa isang party na, for example, uh, payment by mistake nga, yes. wala namang consent dun eh. Pero, uh, does that mean quasi-contract is not really a contract? Yes. Um, Quasi-contract is not properly a contract at all. Kasi unlike in an ordinary contract, sabi natin kanina, dapat may consent para maging valid ng contract. Dito naman sa quasi-contract, there is no consent. Because consent is supplied by law. By fiction. O by fiction of law. Unlike sa contract na ang nagsusupply ng consent is the contracting parties. So, in short, the law considers the parties as having entered into a contract, although they have not actually done so. Yes. Why is that? It is to prevent injustice or unjust enrichment at the expense of another. Again, may unjust enrichment. So, si, ano na, si batas na, by fiction of law, ngayon siyang sabi. Siya yung nagsusupply ng consent. Yung parties, walang consent, pero under fiction of law, my consent. So, yung quasi-contract, this is an exception dun sa rule natin na kapag hindi complete yung essential requisites ng yes. contract ay walang valid contract. Yes. But this one is an exception. 
Pero yun nga, by fiction of law naman, ini-consent pa rin naman. Yes. By fiction of law. So, kaya nga siya tinag na quasi-contract. Contract siya, pero semi-contract. Kaya quasi. Almost, but not quite. Oh, oh, oh. Kaya quasi means semi. Semi. Oh, Semi-contract. Take note of that. And siguro, yes. pag-usapan natin, uh, ano ba tong quasi-contract? Uh, ano ba yung examples ng quasi-contract? So, there are two kinds of quasi-contracts. Mm-hmm. As mentioned earlier, merong negosyorium gesture and solusyo in debt. Mm-hmm. So, what is negosyorium gesture? Mm-hmm. Negosyorium gesture, ito yung voluntary management of the property or affairs of another without the knowledge or consent of the latter. It's yes. uh, contained in Article 2144 of the Civil, Civil Code. Code. So, siguro, um, bigyan natin ng example para mas maintindihan nila. For example, oh, for example, attorney Wade. Coco went to Sulu without leaving somebody to look after his house in Quezon City. Mm. While he is in Sulu, a big fire broke out near his house. Through the efforts of Baron, a close neighbor, Coco's house was saved from being burned. Baron, however, incurred medical expenses for injuries sustained. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yon. We will write the example. Si Coco, meron siyang bahay sa Quezon City. Tapos, nagpunta siya sa Sulu. Mm-hmm. Habang siya ay nasa Sulu at siya ay na-lockdown doon, inabot na ng lockdown sa Sulu, uh, nasunog yung kanyang bahay. O may, a big fire broke out. Sa neighborhood. Oo, oh, 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 oh. yung bahay niya sa Quezon City ay nasusunog. Mm-hmm. Pero through the efforts of a neighbor, si Baron, yung bahay ni Coco was saved from being burned totally. Naapula agad ni Baron yung sunog sa bahay ni Coco. However, si Baron, yung rescuer, siya ay nag-incur ng medical expenses for injury sustained. Okay. So, in, in the example that you've given, the questions to be answered is, first, does Coco have an obligation to pay or to... Uh, to reimburse oh, oh. Uh, to answer Baron. for the medical for, expenses yes. of Baron eh wala naman siyang consent eh mali ba niya diba? oh, hindi oh. naman niya sinabi kay okay, Baron oh, oh. na sasabihin naman ni Coco oh, no, Baron, wala naman ako sinabi sa'yo oh. can, okay. can uh, Coco actually uh, uh, argue okay. that mm-hmm. uh, turning away under the principle of quasi-contracts uh, specifically sa negosyorium gesture no, hindi yun valid defense kay Coco. Oh, oh. Because Coco has the obligation to reimburse Baron for medical expenses although Coco did not actually give his consent to the act of the latter in saving his house. Kasi nag-benefit si Coco mm-hmm. sa pag-save ni Baron sa house ni Coco. Mm-hmm. Kasi so, if, if Baron would not have done that, uh, totally mag-burn down yung, yung bahay, bahay ni Coco. Coco. So, in return, the by fiction of law, there is may benefit a received consent. by Coco under the principle of quasi-contract, it is as if may consent. Yeah. Yes. And anyway, the law would presume na kung nagkaroon ka naman ng knowledge na nasusunog yung bahay mo, Uh-oh. you would consent Send. no Uh-oh. na apulain mo ako eh. Di ba? So, uh, to say na wala kang consent is of no merit. Parang absurd. Absurd to say. Oh, oh, Kasi absurd. kung ikaw ba naman nasusunog yung bahay mo, tapos halimbawa tumawag si Baron sa'yo, Uh-oh. sinabi na nasusunog yung bahay mo, are we gonna save it or not? Uh-oh. Would you say no? Oh, <laughs> di ba? So, consent is of no moment in yes. this case. By fiction mm-hmm. of the plan. So, that's negosyorum uh, gesture. gesture. Now, solution in debit e. Ano naman ito? It is the juridical relation which is created when something is received when there is no right to demand it and it was unduly delivered through mistake. So, an article to 2154. 2154 of of it has requisites. No? The first one is there is no right to receive the thing delivered. delivered. Kasi kung may right ka naman to receive the thing, then there is no, no solution in debit e. So, the fact na wala okay. kang right to receive okay. it, then uh, papasok nang sa requisite. And pangalawa, the thing was delivered through mistake. Mahalaga yung o- operative word na mistake. mistake. Kasi kung oh, hindi naman by mistake, talaga namang intentionally dinilivered sa sa'yo, the, it's not, not solution in debit. Parang donation. Yan, parang oh, magkakaroon donation. donation. Do- so ulitin natin, ang uh, requisites ng solution in debit, yes. first, there is no right to receive, receive the thing delivered and it was delivered through mistake. So, let's give an example para yes, mas maintindihan yes, ng mga bata. No? Uh, for example, Bea, si Bea, he, he uh, owes Kim uh, 1,000 pesos. If Bea paid Gerald, believing that the latter was authorized to receive payment for Kim, kasi akala siguro ni Bea, eh, oh, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> so let's 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 pretend that uh, no, no, walang nang yung yung okay so um continuing for example akala kasi ni Bea si Gerald at si Kim Joy sila pa uh, so hindi siya updated pa uh, alam natin sa kasi ni kahit wala sila pero yun nga so si Bea yung utang niya na one thousand kay Kim ibinayad niya kay Gerald kasi Bea believe that uh, Gerald had the auto authority to receive the payment on behalf of Kim. Now, the obligation to return on the part of Gerald, in this case, would arise. Nice. Uh -oh. um, and if Bea paid 2,000 pesos to, to Kim, Kim by mistake, Kim and, must return the excess of 1,000 pesos. Mm -hmm. oh. so, so, yung unang example, uh, doon sa unang instance, si maling Bea tao. nagbayad sa maling tao. Si Bea nagbayad kay Gerald. In, ang paniniwala ni Bea, si Gerald is the agent of Kim may or may authority to receive payment, eh wala naman pala. So, there is an obligation on the part of Gerald to return the money received from Bea. Sa so, second example naman, si Bea nagbayad uh, kay Kim dun sa kanyang creditor ng 2,000 pesos which is in excess mm -hmm. dun sa kanyang utang. And by mistake, so Kim must return the excess of 1,000 pesos. So, take note that in both examples, um, Bea had a mistake, no? Mm -hmm. yes. on, on her part to pay on the wrong person yes. or to pay the wrong uh, amount. Amount, no? uh -oh. So, solution in debit. Yes, solution in Now, debit. guys, uh, take note that the cases that have been classified as quasi-contracts are of infinite variety. Yes. And when for some reason, recovery cannot be had on, for example, a true contract, then recovery may be allowed on the basis of a quasi-contract. Yes, yes hindi sinasabi natin na kanina mm -hmm. na kung hindi ka makaka-recover sa kontra kasi wala naman kayong stipulated, wala naman kayong pinag-usapan, wala naman mga agreement, pwedeng pumatak yun sa quasi-contra. Okay? Higyan nga natin ang example yan, uh, Attorney Uri. Yes, for example, a seller of goat's milk leaves milk at the house of a buyer each morning. Mm -hmm. The buyer uses the milk and one week after, the seller asks payment for the milk delivered. Mm -hmm. Here, an implied contract is understood to have been entered into by the very acts of the seller and the buyer, creating an obligation on the part of the buyer to pay the reasonable value of the milk and otherwise, buyer would be unjustly benefited at the expense of another. Mm -hmm. So, you always take note yung unjust enrichment. Kagaya dito sa example, si seller laging na, wala naman silang agreement. O, kunyari, yung sa doon na lang sa setup natin sa community, yung may mga nagpapaambag ng babo, yung i-deliver lang bahay-bahay. Wala ka namang order, pero bibigyan ka mm -hmm. ng kapitbahay niya, umorder ka. Mm -hmm. Alibaba, hindi ka naman umorder. Tapos binigyan ka niya ng isang kilong babo, yung binigyan ka na ng pata, tinanggap mo naman. Mm -hmm. O, so, wala naman kayong... Hindi kayo nag-usap. Hindi kayo nag-usap. Basta tinan, sige, sige. Akin na. So, the fact na tinanggap mo siya, mm -hmm. there is an implied Concept. contract. Oo, con there contract. is an implied contract. Mm -hmm. o, ikaw naman, on your part, as a buyer, kinain mo mm -hmm. yung 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 kami. <laughs> o, kinain mo siya. Tapos, nung isang linggo, matapos ko ibigay sa'yo, nakain mo na, na idumi mo na <laughs> yung pagkain, <laughs> naninigil na. na ako si seller. Ba, yung pwede ko bang sabihin na, sabi mo lang naman tayong usapan, akala ko yung ano yun. Uh, uh, Dadalhan-dalhan mo ako, di ka naman sinabing dalhan mo ako. Pwede ba yan guys? Pwede hindi, ba yung attorney? Hindi pwede kasi papatak yun sa quasi-contract. There is an yes. implied contract created between the parties. Otherwise, there will be an adjustment. Yun, 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 yun yung pinaka- uh, purpose nitong quasi contract to prevent unjust right. enrichment right uh, take note of that guys uh, that's very important yes. now moving on to article 1161 um, this has something to do with the civil obligations arising from criminal offenses yes. Yes. which shall be governed by the penal laws subject to the provisions of article 2177 and of the pertinent provisions of chapter 2 the preliminary title on human relations and of title 18 of this book regulating damages. Okay. So, ano, ano bang ibig sabihin nito? It has something to do with the civil liability arising, arising from, from crimes, crimes or ethics. So, oftentimes, the commission of a crime causes not only moral evil, but also material damage. Yes. Correct. 
So there's a general rule. Yes, there's a general rule under Article 100 of the Revised Penal Code that every person criminally liable is also civilly liable for damages. That's the general rule, but there is an exception. The exception is in crimes which cause no material damage. For mm -hmm. example, there is no civil liability to be enforced. Yes. Ano yung mga crimes attempt. na yun na walang material damage at walang civil liability to be imposed? Mm. For example, violation of the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act, violation of the election code, and yes. possession of firearms and ammunition. Yes. These are uh, criminal offenses that don't have necessarily a civil uh, no, Wala tayong liability. private complaint. Yes. Walang private offended party. Kagaya dyan sa sa drugs, Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act. Yung violation yan, hindi ka hindi mo naman violate ang private right ng isang tao. Mm -hmm. oh, pero, that is a crime. Ibig sabihin, you are a threat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. in those instances, um, though he is criminally liable, liable there is liable no... Criminally liable kasi, for example, selling or pushing. Oh. That's uh, sanctioned by law and mm -hmm. you, you might be imprisoned. Meron kang criminal liability for imprisonment, pero wala kang civil liability. But that okay. is the exception. Yes. The general rule is still... May civil liability. Yes. Pag may criminal liability. And okay. uh, a person not criminally responsible may still be civilly liable such as causing damage to another's property without malicious or criminal intent or negligence. negligence. Ito naman, ito yung arising from fault mm -hmm. or negligence. negligence. Yung Article 365 yes. sa Revised Penal Code. Mm -hmm. Walang... Uh, Wala uh, criminal liability yeah. pero civil liable. No? The, criminal, the negligence. Naman, criminal negligence. Criminal oh, negligence. Yes. Okay, so um, since na papag-usapan naman yeah. na natin yung civil liability, ano-ano mm -hmm. ba yung scope ng civil liability na ito in the event na civil liability yung isang tao? Yes, yeah, so Article 104 of the Revised Penal Code uh, talks about the scope of civil liability. First, restitution, mm -hmm. second, reparation for the damage cost, and third, indemnification for consequential damages. Mm -hmm. Restitution meaning return. Mm -hmm. if, if it can be returned. Oh, if it can be returned. Yun yung unang-una. Yun yung unang, kagaya sa rape, may i-return ka ba doon? Wala. Wala. Pero kung Carnapping. theft, theft, theft. or carnapping, may pwedeng i-return. Restitution. Restitution of the money or restitution of the car. Mm -hmm. Or the vehicle. Yes. Oh, yan. But pag hindi nakapasible yung restitution? Kung hindi feasible yung restitution, yung pangalawa, dun papasok yung reparation for the damage cost. For example, sa carnapping, nawala yung kotse, na ninakaw mo, so you are obliged to pay the amount of the car to the victim. Yeah. Reparation mm. for damage. And uh, the also indemnification one, for oh, oh, So, may reparation for damages and yung pantatlo, indemnification for consequential damages. Ano naman ito? So, halimbawa, yung kotse mo, ay, ay yung kotse mo nanakaw. So, yung, uh, yung offender ay obliged to return in mm. restitution. Kung feasible, kung nandyan pa yung kotse. At saka, babayaran ka rin yan na, for example, moral damages, mm. because of anxiety, because of sleepless, sleepless nights, nights, because of humiliation, bismarck's reputation, yung moral, nominal, or exemplary uh -huh. damages. O, kung hindi naman, kung wala na naman, di na maibalik yung kotse kasi na wala na, hindi na alam, di na malukid kung nasan, you pay the value of the reparation for the damages, you pay the value of the car, plus indemnification for moral, nominal, or exemplary damages as the case may. Yeah. So, um, that, that's in order. So, for yes. example, if, uh, for example, if, someone named Acusado mm -hmm. is convicted for a crime of carnapping, uh, the court will order Acusado first to return the car or pay its value if it was lost or destroyed. That's yes. the first priority. If it's not possible, pay for any damage caused to the car. Kasi possible kasi na ano eh, dinakaw mo. Oh, oh. Nandyan yung car. Kasi na ba nang binalik mo? Ba na may ano? May gas-gas na. Puro gas -gas. May brand new. Brand, may brand new. new. Oh, so, fingers. hindi pwedeng restitution lang na ibalik mm -hmm. mo yung sasakyan tapos gas-gasin naman. Kailangan ka magpay ng damage cost to the car. Yes. Kung may mga oh, nangyaring defect or gas-gas nga dun sa kotse. Pangatlo, indemnify such other damages suffered by the offended party. Sabi nga na ni Uy kanina, as a consequence of the crime, like the moral nominal or exam exemplary uh, damages. Okay. Now, uh, proceeding from Article 1161 to 1162, ano ba yung 1162? Yes, Article 1162 talks about obligations arising from 
quasi delic. So, obligations derived from quasi delics shall be governed by the provisions of Chapter 2, Title 17 of this book, and by special laws. Mm -hmm. So, these Again, are. Again, let's define what are quasi delics. Delic. These are obligations arising from quasi delics. Mm -hmm. A quasi delic is an act or a mission by a person which causes damage to another, there being fault or negligence but without any pre-existing contractual relation between the parties as stated in Article 2176 of the Civil Code and it has its requisites. Yes, uh, imagine natin, yung definition niya under Article 2176, doon, doon din natin makikita yung requisites yes. ng quasi belly. Mm -hmm. First, the requisite there must be an act or omission. Okay? Second, such act or omission causes damage to another. So, may damage. Pantatlo, the damage was caused through fault or negligence. Mm -hmm. Pangapat, there must be a direct relation or connection between the act or omission and the resulting damage. And the last one, there is no pre-existing contractual relation between the parties. So, attorney, are there are five requisites yes, here. Kailangan ba mag-exist uh, yung limang to? Yes, all five requisites must concur mm -hmm. for uh, quasi delic to exist. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. siguro, to clarify this point, yes. uh, let's give an example. Uh, halimbawa, um, while having a ball game with friends, um, bata, broke the window glass of Tadda. <laughs> so, <laughs> his neighbor. So, yung bata, naglalaro. Pangalan na natin siyang bata. Laro, naglalaro ng, ano, eh, ng ball game. Eh. Eh, so, paglalaro ng mga bata, kumasik sa pabasaging window, window. ng kapitbahay na si Tadda. Okay? Yes. The accident would not have happened, of course, had they played a little farther from the house of Tadda. Kasi kung yes. sa parangan sila naglaro, hindi naman mababasag yung window niya. So, ni yun yung negligence. There was negligence okay. there. So, ano alin doon yung act or omission? Oh. Yung kicking of the ball and uh, hitting yeah. it. Hitting the uh, window. The window. Yun yung act or yes. omission. Right? And, and yung such act or omission causes damage. Ano yung nag-cause ng damage? The... The, the window of the ball uh, uh -huh. causing it to hit the window and eventually the window uh, broke uh -huh. because of that incident. So that is the act or emission which caused damage. And you fault or negligence? May fault or negligence pa doon? Yes, because yeah. had they played a little bit farther from the house of Tanda, they would not have uh, cost. cost damage to the window mm. of Tanda. Is there a direct relation sure. or connection between the act or and yes. the resulting damage? The act of kicking the ball and hitting the uh, yeah. hitting and the ball hitting the window, it causes there's a direct damage. Uh, connection. Oh, there's a direct connection. And uh, there obviously there is no pre-existing contractual relation uh, between, between the parties. parties. So all in all, we can say that the five uh, requisites of pasidelic exist in that case. And so we can uh, say that there is an obligation, obligation. based on quasi yes, uh, yes. So, nabagit na rin naman natin siguro yung kanina, yung crime, yes. and then yung quasi delic. Uh, uh, yung kanina naman, kung kanina, delic ito as distinguished from quasi delic. So, ito naman quasi delic, parang quasi crimes. Mm -hmm. so, quasi delic. So, first, sa crime, there is no. There is, there is criminal, criminal or malicious intent or criminal negligence. Mm. Quasi, delic, Quasi delic, there is only negligence. Yes. Wala yung, as, uh, yung element ng criminal or malicious intent. Yes. Okay? Negligence lang. Nagpabaya ka lang. Nagpabaya na. Uh, oh. Doon naman sa crime, pwede ka rin namang may criminal negligence pero pwede din na may criminal or malicious intent. Mm -hmm. Another, sa crime, purpose. the purpose is punishment. Pagdating sa crime. Or imprisonment. Sa quasi-delic oh. naman, the purpose is, of course, indemnification of the offended party. Yes. To indemnify. For quasi-delic, the purpose is indemnification of the offended party. Mm. For crime, crime affects public interest. As discussed mm. earlier, kasi nga, laging kasali ang state party, yes. primary offended party ang state. Yes. Well, in quasi-delic, uh, it concerns uh, private interest. No? Yes. So, private lang na. So, in crime, there's generally both 
criminal and civil liability. While in quasi delegates only civil, civil liability. liability. Correct. In crimes, uh, it cannot be crimes cannot be compromised or settled by the parties themselves. While quasi delict, it can be compromised as any other civil liability. In short, pwedeng yes. mag-usap na lang yung parties and yes. compromise para tapos yung Yes, kasi pareso mas ng private individual. Mm-hmm. Unlike crimes na kad, uh, party din yung state. Mm-hmm. So you have to obtain the consent of the state. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the guilt of the accused must be proved beyond reasonable doubt when it comes to crimes. But in quasi delict, the fault or negligence of the defendant need only be proved by pre- preponderance of evidence. Yes. So, okay, so rules on evidence kasi, yung proof beyond reasonable doubt, it enjoys the highest, high, nasa hierarchy of the uh, 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 proof of evidence. Mm-hmm. So the only time that the a person can proof. be held uh, criminally liable is if it can be proven beyond reasonable doubt that he is the person liable or who committed mm. the crime. Pag sa quasi delict, preponderance lang yun. Oo, oh, preponderance of oh, evidence. evidence. Like any other civil cases. Mm. Alright. So, take note of the difference uh, of the two. So, um, overall, we've just uh, tackled and discussed the um, yes. general... So, a little uh, bit note for yes. you is that yung sources mm-hmm. of law na didiscuss natin sa module 1 must be distinguished from sources of obligation under article 1157 mm-hmm. na discuss dito madami kasi nagkakamali dyan pinag i dito sila sa sources of law and sources of obligation mm-hmm. ulitin ko yung sources of law under the module 1 sa intro to law ang sources of law ay primary and secondary, secondary sources. sources so primary sources as a review, meron constitution, constitution. legislation, administrative or executive orders, and, and, and IRRs, meron tayong decisions. jurisprudence or judicial decisions at costo, at saka yung secondary sources of law. Dito naman, sources of obligation, lima, under Article 1157, we have law, contracts, quasi-contracts, quasi acts or omissions punishable by law, by law at saka quasi mm-hmm. So, in short, yung law na tinutukoy natin sa uh, Module 1, it's just one of the sources yes, of obligation yes, under correct. Article 1156. So, yung primary and secondary sources na nabanggit ni Atty. Nio, papasok ko yes. yun dun sa Law, law, which is the source, a of, source an of an obligation. So, okay. constitution can be a source of an yes. obligation. No? Mm-hmm. Judicial uh, decisions, decisions. Pwede rin yan, mm-hmm. So, take note of that. And, uh, yun nga, um, we've just uh, wrapped up yung discussion as to the general provisions uh, for obligations. Yes. No? And, uh, we hope na you've learned something, yes, something. <laughs> dun sa obligation kasi very important yes. to sa mga susunod. Yes, kailangan us. alam yung basic. These are the basics mm-hmm. when it comes to obligations and contracts. In order to go on and in order to fully understand, you have to uh, really try your very, very best to understand this general provision. Yes, and actually my students, uh, previous mm-hmm. students, they know this. Na I would always uh, require them to memorize this by heart. At least 11.56 and 11.57, no? when, when you're asked what are the sources of uh, an obligation, obligation, you should be able to give the, yes. the five, no? five sources of obligation. And uh, ganun, ganun yung maging takbuhan ng mga questions natin in the, in the coming uh, discussions. Kasi yung susunod natin sa module 3. Sa module 3, nandun na yung nature and effects of obligations. Mm. Medyo madugo. Yes. Yeah, madugo and when we tackle that, there is already a presumption that you already, you already know, know the, oh, oh. the basics. You have a program. full understanding of this module. And the sources. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, so, that's just it. Uh, on that note, uh, we would like to inform you that that ends the um, module, uh, module 2, two na yeah. tayo. and thank you for uh, tuning with us and uh, we hope that you've learned nga, uh, as regards yes. general provisions and obligations and you and have to learn ito talaga yes. uh, very uh-huh. important siya, uh, in order for you to pass law 201 or the law on obligations and contracts and on that note uh, guys um, I would like to invite you to um, subscribe in uh, our channel. Uh, this is actually a collaboration with uh, Attorney Boy, yes. but uh, it's uploaded here in my channel. It's uh, called Legally Engineered. Legally Engineered because I am a lawyer and a 
Actually, here at the same time. Attorney Uy here is a political scientist. <laughs> <laughs> a political scientist and a lawyer at the same time. Kaya kita nyo naman ang discussions niya about the um, three branches Just of the government. government. Uh, yan, yun yung kanyang forte. And so, and guys, if you have questions and clarifications, you can comment on the uh, comment section uh, below and we'll try our best to answer that um, in our next uh, modules to be uploaded here in this channel. Again, please like, share, and subscribe and click the bell button for notifications. Yes, vlogger. So, yun lang. Again, this has been Attorney Bendrick A. Maralit and Attorney A. Phil M. O. And I hope, we hope that you have fun as you learn. See you next time. Bye-bye.